Singapore Exchange will be seeing yet another billion dollar delisting. This time, it's one of my stock. Time to celebrate! Hi guys, Stanley here. Yet another high profile delisting is happening on SGX. This come after many popular companies such as SMRT, Capital Land, OSIM International, Super Coffee, and even most recently, BreadTalk have decided to leave SGX over the past few years. This week, Perennial Real Estate has announced its own plan to delist the company at 95 cents per share. That's 38% premium to the last traded price before the announcement. So what's the deal about and what should investors do about it? First, let's recap what is Perennial Real Estate. The company is a property owner and developer with assets across Singapore and China. It has a high-profile management and board of directors led by Mr. Pua Sek Kwan, the CEO of Perennial. Other directors include Mr. Ron Sim, the founder of OSIM International, and also Mr. Kwok Kun Hong, the chairman of Wilma International, one of the largest agribusiness in the region. Together, this is the group behind the current privatization offer. Perennial owns iconic buildings in Singapore such as Chime and Capital Singapore. In China, it is developing the Beijing Dongzhou Integrated Development and also own property across cities like Chengdu, Kunming, Shenyang, and Fosan. In 2019, Perennial barely makes a profit, so maybe a better way to value the company might be using its net tangible asset value. Net tangible asset value is simply the equity of the company minus any intangible asset it has, such as goodwill. At the end of 2019, that figure is around $1.54. That means that even at a privatization offer of 95 cents per share, that could still be undervaluing the company by as much as 38%. Although it seems that management is trying to shortchain shareholders, the truth is market is not valuing the company much anyway. Most property companies right now are trading below 0.5 times their book value. In fact, Perennial has been trading around 0.45 times its book value before the announcement. So without the deal, it is almost impossible for minority shareholder to fully realize the value of the company. And from the viewpoint of the management, they would want to get a good deal out of this as well. So it might be difficult for minority shareholders to fight for a better price at this point and could be better off just meeting management halfway. And as a small shareholder in this company, that is certainly what I'm planning to do. I'm already thinking about how to reinvest the proceeds from this deal. But interestingly, the decision to delist might not even come down to us as minority shareholders. This is because the buyer in this deal has already owned about 82.4% of the company. And according to SGX listing rule, a company need at least 10% of their shares in the public hand to remain listed. This means that the buyer just need an additional 7.6% to delist the company. They have also announced their plan to do a compulsory acquisition if necessary. This means that if enough shareholders agree to the deal, they can take the company fully private. As an investor, I'm just sitting tight and waiting for the proceed. After all, it's a good deal for management and a reasonable deal for shareholders. The only party that might not be too happy about this might be Singapore Exchange. But that's story for another day. Anyway, that's it from me. If you are thinking on how to reinvest your proceeds as well, we have a free dividend stock guide ebook just for you. Just click on the link down below to download it. We feature five dividend stocks that might be good investment for you right now. As always, till we meet again, invest safely. Hi guys, thanks for watching the video. If you like it, please give us a like. And if you find it useful, I hope you share it as well. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell button to get notified on our next video. I'll see you in the next one.